right? We're looking at simultaneous motion. This means we have multiple objects, typically two for us, that are going to meet sometime. Now, when you meet someone, you typically need to know a place and a time. So that means you have to have a common coordinate system. So if you're going to call someone and they're in a different time zone, you have to agree on a common time. You can't each say we're going to call at 6 o'clock and one person calls at their 6 and the other person calls at their 6. It won't work. So first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that both of them have a common time and coordinate system so that they're equivalent. Because what we want to do is we want to graph those two bits of motion. We want to see where those two graphs cross. So there's about three examples that I'm going to think about when I set this up. So one of them is both objects start at different positions. So they start at different positions, they have different velocities, and then some point in time and some location, they cross. So if they have different positions, I'll typically call one of their positions x equals 0 and the other one some value. And I could again have one start in a negative position too. The other option is, well, they could start at different times. So someone starts after someone else and tries to catch them. So they run faster. In this case, they'll start at different times. Now the time one's a little tricky, so what you want to do, or what I prefer to do, is I prefer to call this point right here zero. Okay. The reason I like to do this is because this person's time, the red one, is going to be a time t. And the green person, so let's say they start 10 seconds off, the green person is going to be a time t plus 10. So I'm going to always add on time to the person that started or who's been traveling longer. Okay. And the third option we have is maybe they start at the same position. They start at exactly the same time, but they start with different velocities and maybe one of them's accelerating. And so this one might accelerate and catch up. And so we're looking for that time. So again, we're going to try and find when these two objects meet. And so you'll notice I have position versus time graphs for each of these. So I'm going to end up with an equation for the position of the red and an equation for the position of the green. And I'm going to see when do they meet. Now, if they're straight lines, there's only going to be one intersection. Uh, if I have a situation like this, there's going to be two intersections. So I'm going to have two solutions. And you can imagine that the more curvature the lines have, the more crosses they could have. So let's set up a problem, shall we? So we have our problem set up. We have two runners. Runner A and runner B. Runner A starts 9 meters behind runner B. Runner A is moving at 8 meters per second and trying to catch up to runner B who's moving at 5 meters per second. Now these are constant velocities, so you might remember constant velocities. We're going to set up our list of variables because it's a constant acceleration and a constant velocity. And constant velocity means our accelerations are going to be 0 for both of them. Also, our velocities are going to be the same. So the initial and finals will be the same. So let's set up runner A. So runner A is moving at 8 meters per second in the positive direction. I'm going to call the right my positive direction. Runner B is also moving in the positive direction, but this runner is running at 5 meters per second. Now, remember, they need to be on the same coordinate system and in the same time frame. So since they both start at the same time. They're both going to experience a time t. But they don't start at the same position. Okay. So I got to choose which one should start at position 0. Okay. Well, I'm going to just choose the first runner as x equals 0. Okay. So runner A starts at 0. Runner B starts at 9 meters then. Now they're on the same coordinate system. When they catch, when A catches B, they're going to have the same final position. So this X is the same and this time is the same. So these are our common variables. These are the things we're going to set equal to each other when we solve our system of equations. So you might remember from our constant velocity one that acceleration is zero. That means we're using equation number two. 
And so I have x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Same over here, so I have x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Now this is a pretty common equation to use in simultaneous problems because when we looked at those graphs of position versus time, this is the equation we were looking at that was being graphed. And so when we think about those two lines, in this case, I have my two lines that look like this. There's runner A, there's runner B. Um, I'm essentially trying to see when do those two lines cross. So I need to look at those two equations to see when are they equal. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cross off anything that's zero. So runner A starts at a position of zero and has no acceleration. Runner B has no acceleration. Okay. So what's common between these two? What's common is time and position. Time and position. Okay. This V naught is referring to this five. This V naught is referring to this eight. So let's write that in just so we don't get confused. So this equation becomes x is equal to 8t. This equation becomes x is equal to the initial position 9 plus 5t. And so now I have two equations, two unknowns. I should be able to solve this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out the time. Okay. So the time would be, set them equal to each other. So I have 8t is equal to 9 plus 5t. Subtract the 5t over, so I have 3t equals 9. So t is equal to 3 seconds. So 3 seconds after they start, runner A will catch runner B. Now, this question could be posed a couple ways. I could say, well, how long does it take to catch runner B? Or I could say, how far does runner A run and how far does runner B run? Okay, so if I want to find out how far runner A runs, I use the position of runner A. Okay. Now, how far runner B runs, okay. now remember, how far is kind of a displacement idea. So for runner A, it was pretty easy because the final position minus the initial position, which was zero. So the distance they ran, or their displacement, is equal to their final position. For runner B, however, the displacement is going to be that final position minus their initial position, which was nine, because they ran nine meters less than runner A. So we can figure that out. So plug in three seconds here, and I can find x. So x is going to be eight times three. So x is equal to 24 meters. So runner A ran 24 meters. Runner B ran 24 minus nine, so they ran 15 meters. And that's the simultaneous problem.